Good morning, fifth and sixth grade. Today we are going on to the next section in science, which is the muscular system. So we were talking about the human body. So far, last time we went through what are the different systems that we have within the body, and there are about 11 different systems. We talked about six last time, and so we're gonna dive into the first of one of those six systems, which is the muscular system, which obviously as it sounds, we are gonna be talking about different kinds of muscles. Now, when you think of muscles, you probably think of weightlifting and growing those muscles to be strong, but muscles include more than just our strength muscles. There's a lot of things in our bodies that we wouldn't think of muscles that actually are. So we are on page 158 in your science book, The Muscular System. We're gonna start by looking at some vocabulary. So the first vocabulary is paracelesis, and it's the involuntary muscular contraction that moves food through the digestive tract. Um, so this is the movement of food, and your muscles working to move food through your digestive tract. And then tendon is the second one, the connective tissue that attaches muscle to bone. All right. The muscular system makes it possible to eat or drink something within the, bo with the, with the body upside down. Have you ever tried doing that before? Once swallowed, the food or drink moves through the digestive tract by muscles contracting and relaxing. This rhythmic movement is called peristal let me get this right. Peristalsis. Peristalsis. Running, jumping, blinking the eye, and breathing depend upon a muscle action as well. In fact, whether awake or sleeping, all body movement depends upon many muscles working together. There are three types of muscle tissue, skeletal, smooth, and cardiac. In the human body, there are approximately 650 skeletal muscles, which are attached to the bones of the skeleton. All skeletal muscle is composed of many muscle cells that appear striated or banded, like they have strips, you can see like stripes in them. These individual cells are arranged in parallel bundles. The body of the muscle is called the belly. The entire muscle is wrapped in connective tissue called the fascia. At the end of the muscle, the fascia forms a tough fibrous tendon, which attaches to the muscle, the muscle to a bone. The nervous system constantly sends nerves, nerve impulses along the nerve cells to the skeletal muscles. These impulses cause the muscle to contract and require energy to do so. So it's actually your brain that tells your muscles what to do. Down at the bottom, cardio, cardiac and skeletal muscles are striated or striped, while smooth muscles are not. Each is uniquely designed to perform specific functions. So you have some pictures down there of cardiac muscle cell, a skeletal muscle cell, a smooth muscle cell. And then you have kind of a breakdown of what that looks like. So you have the muscle fiber in the middle, you have blood vessels surrounding it, you have the muscle as a whole, and then you have the tendon that attaches it to the bone. So what happens if the Achilles tendon is severed, meaning cut? What happens to that? What actually happens is your muscle recoils or kind of like an elastic bounces back up your leg. And so that tendon is pulling that muscle down and putting tension on it and attaching it to your heel bone um, so that when you walk, it gives you spring and gives you the ability to move forward. But if you were to sever that Achilles tendon, that would kind of whiplash your muscle right back up into your leg and you would have no movability of your foot. Your, that is the muscle that allows you to move your foot up and down to walk forward and you wouldn't actually be able to do that. Skeletal muscles hold the skeleton together, giving the body shape and providing the force to move bones. To give joints a full range of motion, skeletal muscles exist in pairs that oppose each other. For example, as the bicep on the inner top of the arm contracts, the triceps on the outer top of the arm relax. This results in the lower arm moving upward. Reversing this process moves the arm downward. Skeletal muscles contract quickly and voluntarily, yet can tire easily. 
if you think about if you touch a hot surface or you poke your finger on something, your arm immediately moves back really fast. That's not because you thought about moving it back. That's your brain sending an impulse to your muscles to say, move, this is not good. Same thing if you step on a nail or if you step on a, a shell at the beach or on something hot, your body reacts and sends messages through your nerves to your muscles to say, it is time to move. Smooth muscles line the digestive tract, blood vessels, bladder, and other internal organs. To contract, they contract and relax slowly and have the ability to endure long periods of work without tiring. Smooth muscles move involuntarily because the nervous system controls them automatically. For example, as the smooth muscle of the stomach contracts, the food is mixed with enzymes to make chyme. Now we talked about that last time. Now, are you thinking every day when you eat food, do you have to sit and think, okay, stomach muscle, now we're going to contract and digest our food. Okay, intestinal muscles, now we're going to move that food down through the body. No, you don't. It's involuntary. Your brain does all the thinking for you when it comes to that muscle. Same thing with things like your heart. Does your brain, do you sit there and think, okay, beat now, beat now, beat now, beat now? No, thankfully not. Our brain works as um, the functioning for us. Uh, it does it involuntarily. Whether we want it to or not, those internal muscles are going to work to make your body work together. God created it that way. So below you can see the opposing muscle in the arm. So you have the tricep muscle on the um, extensor, the bicep muscle, which is your flexor, and that is a tricep contraction. And you can see where the tendons attach it to the bones. And then when you flex that muscle, your bicep muscle becomes the flexor and your tricep muscle becomes the an extensor. And that would be a bicep contraction. So give that a try now. If you um, curl your arm in a bicep curl, feel how your muscle gets tighter. And then if you were to go back in a tricep curl, how that tricep muscle tightens, but not your bicep. So they work opposed to each other. Skeletal muscles must work in pairs. They are responsible for breathing, locomotion, and even facial expressions. So if you didn't have muscles in your face, you wouldn't be able to lift, raise your eyebrows, or smile, or frown, or any of those other things. Um, I had a friend once who had something called Bell's palsy, which you can get suddenly, and they don't really know why it happens. Um, and sometimes it lasts for a couple hours, and sometimes it lasts for years. And what it is, is it's paralysis of your face. And it's usually just half of the muscles in your face. And so one day she was smiling. She went to smile and she said, this feels funny. Why? My smile feels funny. And she looked in the mirror and exactly halfway down her face, all of the muscles on the right side of her face stopped working. And so when she smiled, only this side of her mouth went up in a smile. And when she blinked or tried to close her eyes, only this eye would close. She couldn't actually close this eye because all of those muscles on the side of her face were experiencing paralysis. Um, and so it makes you realize how important the muscles in your face are uh, for talking, for eating, for blinking, for expressing your emotions. That's all muscles that allow that to work. So in the field, ideas about robotics have been around through, throughout recorded history, although the term itself was not used until 1941. The first industrial robot became operational at the General Motors factory in 1961. Not until 1998 was the first bionic arm for humans fitted. Presently, research continues on the use of robotic assistance in the medical field. Robots have been utilized in the automotive industry, particularly in the spot welding automobiles on assembly lines. In the space program, various unmanned spacecrafts have gone to the moon and other planets. Robots are also used by law enforcement to dispose of bombs and carry video cameras and microphones into dangerous areas. In the military, robots have located and destroyed mines in water and on land. 
So a robot, um, in order for it to have kind of human capabilities, not just like a remote control moving forward and moving back, but having cap capabilities of grasping things or picking things up or swiveling, a lot of those things, they have to recreate kind of like a muscle tendon system in order for it to have the same capabilities that a human body would. Or when you're recreating prosthetic arms or legs, um, a lot of times they have to create a system of tendon and muscle, um, artificial pieces, so that your body can work the way that it would naturally. So it's pretty amazing to see where science has come so far. We talked about the assembly line in social studies as um, Henry Ford was the first one to start this assembly line of, cre of manufacturing, which made things more efficient and faster and cheaper. If you were to watch a YouTube video on um, like a car uh, manufacturing company in Detroit, you can go ahead and watch that. You can see how there are still humans who do a lot of parts along the assembly line, but a lot of it is done by robot. The car moves along a conveyor belt. There's big robotic arms that come down and screw things in and put place, things in place and paint. And they each have their own job along the assembly line. But it's robotic instead of human now. So science has come a long way when it comes to that. All right. So our muscles are so important. Yes, our organs are important and our Bones are important, which we're going to learn more about uh, later this and next week, but our muscles are really what make us go. Our muscles are what allow us to function. They allow us to move physically. They allow our body to move things along with inside our bodies, whether that's blood or oxygen or our food or water. We need muscles in order to get that to go where it needs to go. Like we said, if you were standing on your head and eating something, you don't want that food to all just pool into your sinuses or your brain. Um, not that it would go to your brain, it would go into your sinus cavities or it would come out your nose. Um, thankfully, because of muscles, you can stand on your head and swallow something at the same time and it's gonna go where it needs to go. If those muscles stopped working, everything would drain to your head once you were on your head or when you were standing, everything would drain to your the bottom of your intestines instead of staying and being processed the way it needs to be processed. So thank goodness for muscles. Okay, we are gonna be opening up to lab 13.3a today. And we're gonna go through these questions together. So I'm going to um, share my screen with a whiteboard. Okay, so we are on muscle mania. So on page 13.3a, we're going to read and complete the exercise below. So we're going to start categorizing what group of muscles would this be considered? Where would we find this group of muscles? Okay. All right. So for the sec first section, match the correct type of muscle tissue with the body part. Write SM for smooth, C for cardiac, and SK for skeletal. Use the muscular system poster to help. We don't have the muscular system poster, but that's why I'm here to do it with you. Okay. So first off, we have the stomach muscle. And the stomach muscle, the stomach muscle is going to be a smooth muscle. So we're going to write SM for smooth muscle. So that's a muscle. Um, within your body that moves food along. It does it in a slow process and it does it without tiring. Remember we read that smooth muscles move things through your body involuntarily without tiring. And so your, your stomach's not going to say, oh, I need a rest. I can't digest right now. No, your brain is going to have it keep digesting food. If you're running, you can stop your body and say, I'm tired. I'm going to lay down right now. But you can't do that with your smooth muscles. So think of that when you think of smooth muscles. It's ones that work involuntarily by the nerves, um, impulses sent through your nerves from your brain. Okay. Um, going across to the right, we're going to see the deltoid. Have you ever heard of a deltoid muscle? I know Miss Heidi has worked with you guys a lot over the years with your body system and your muscles. Um, those of you in Miss Madison's class, so I know she goes through a lot of muscles in her gym class, but your deltoid muscle is a strength muscle, okay? So this is going to be SK for skeletal. This is one of the muscles um, used for movement of your body physically on the outside. Okay, next we have your heart. 
pretty important muscle, I would say. Your heart involuntarily moves blood through your body, but this is a cardiac. So we're gonna put a C for cardiac. This is a cardiac muscle. Cardiac means having to do with your circulatory system. So your heart, um, if you heard of like cardiac arrest is a name for heart attack. So cardiac has to do with your heart, anything that has to do with your heart and pumping blood through your system. So heart would be C for cardiac. Next we have the rectus abdominis. So rectus. Abdominus. Abdominus. A lot of times our muscles are named in Latin. Um, and so you might think, what is that? It doesn't even make sense. Um, but your rectus abdominis is your abdominal muscles, or your abs, we call them. Um, and so it's a section of your abdominal muscles, your stomach muscles, or the muscles in front of your torso. And so this is going to be a skeletal muscle, as it is one worked for strength training, for making your body strong to move um, forward and back, or however way we move in the world. All right, next is an artery. Your artery is attached to your heart or in major sections of your body that have the most amount of blood flow through them. So they're really important vessels for blood to move through, to be transferred through your whole body. And because this has to do um, with your blood flow, you also have arteries um, that are attached to your heart, but you have arteries, like in your neck, you have an artery, in your legs, you have an artery, in your arms, you have arteries. Um, and these are actually smooth muscles. Um, they could probably be considered cardiac as well because they do move blood through your body. Um, but these arteries, your arteries um, are really important for how think, uh, blood and oxygen are moved through your body. Um, so it happens involuntarily. It happens without tiring. Your body is not going to say, oh, I don't feel like moving blood today. Um, and so that's a smooth muscle in that sense. But it also can be considered cardiac because it moves blood throughout your body. All right, the next one is small intestine. Your small intestine is part of your digestional tract, your digestion tract. And so again, involuntary, moves without tiring, does its job by nerve impulses from your brain. And so this is going to be a smooth muscle. All right, in the next section, identify each muscle or muscle-lined body part according to its muscular movement type using V for voluntary and IV for involuntary. So voluntary means you have a choice whether it contracts or works or does its job. And involuntary means your brain has all the control. You don't have a choice. And that's a good thing. All right, so the first one is your stomach. Your stomach, how it works is involuntary, IV. It digests your food without you thinking about it. You eat your lunch and you run off to the next thing and go outside and play or go swimming or go read a book. And you're not thinking, hmm, I should make my stomach do its job. Nope, it does it involuntarily. All right, your heart. Thankfully, your heart is involuntary. If it was not, when we go to sleep, you can't voluntarily think about things when you're sleeping. And so if this was an, a voluntary muscle, it would stop beating when you went to sleep. So thankfully, we have involuntary muscles that keep working regardless of what state our body is in. Smooth muscles, as we learned before, all smooth muscles are involuntary. They all work by the impulses from your brain telling it what to do. So smooth would be involuntary. Biceps. Biceps would be voluntary. If you're sitting listening to me right now, your biceps probably aren't working. But if you flex your arm or write with your pencil or get up and stretch, that's voluntary. You're choosing to do those motions and choosing to use your bicep muscle to make it work. Your skeletal muscles. All skeletal muscles are ones that make you move um, and they're all voluntary. Okay, if you're laying down sleeping, um, you can have involuntary twitches when you're sleeping sometimes, or you might move in your sleep and roll around in your sleep due to a dream. Um, but you're, unless you're doing those things, you're laying there and none of your muscles are moving, uh, except for your smooth muscles. 
And so your skeletal muscles that make you walk and move um, are voluntary. All right, and the last one is your bladder, which holds your urine before it goes out of your body. And so your bladder is involuntary. That's a smooth muscle that your brain tells it what to do. It tells it how to process your urine. It tells you when it, you need to go. And so that is involuntary. All right, number four, ex or number three, excuse me. Explain how skeletal muscles work to move the bones. Okay, so we talked about how muscles, skeletal muscles have um, opposite relationships with another muscle. So when one contracts or shortens, contract means to shorten up, when one muscle contracts, the opposite one relaxes and this makes your bones move. Okay, so we're gonna say when one muscle contracts, shortens, The opposite muscle, oh, there we go. The opposite muscle relaxes and this moves the bones. So when one muscle contracts or shortens, the opposite muscle relax and this moves the bones. Because if you think of your bicep, if you tighten your bicep, you can feel your tricep underneath is loose. If they were both tight, your arm would just be outstretched. You wouldn't be able to move it in this way, your tendon pulling it this way, if, you're, if it was also pulling it this way. And so having this relax, relax allows this to move this way, it allows your arm to move this way. And so you have to have the opposite of that relax so that you can move in that way. God created us pretty amazingly to have all these systems work. Four, how is the muscular system dependent on the nervous system? So the nervous system, if you think of your smooth muscles, your involuntary muscles, you have to have your nervous system to tell them what to do because you're not physically telling them what to do. Your brain is, has the job of that. And so without that, they wouldn't be doing their job. So the nervous system, is constantly sending signals to those muscles to do their job, which is to contract. So the nurse's nervous system is constantly sending signals to tell the muscles contract and relax. So without that nervous system, none of your smooth muscles would be able to do their job. Number five, what keeps food and liquids moving through your digestive tract? This is one of the first vocabulary words we saw. Uh, it's a big word starting with a P. So the word that keeps food and liquids moving through your digestive tract is called your peristasis. Paris. Number six, muscles that are attached to bones by what? Your muscles are attached to your bones by your tendons. Think of your Achilles tendon. Tendons. And your tendons are important because they keep your muscle at a state of um, being stretched or moved so when you move forward it holds it to the bone so that your muscles are not just free flowing through your body because then they wouldn't do your job do the job your muscles kind of give the energy to move your bones without being attached to your bones they're not going to move anything they're just going to be sitting there and so your tendons hold them in place so that it actually moves the bones when those muscles contract or relax even though the diaphragm is a muscle, we talked about this last time, the diaphragm is a muscle under your lungs. It's used a lot in singing or projecting your voice. So very important. Even though the diaphragm is a muscle, it's part of the 
respiratory system because it helps your, your lungs contracting, um, and the amount of airflow that you have going through your body, the force at which you are able to expel air from your body, that all comes from your diaphragm. So this is gonna be part of your respiratory system. Now we don't have a picture of a skeletal muscle. Um, oh, actually this is in your textbook, yes. So look at the picture of the skeletal muscle in your textbook. So going back to the diagram that broke it down, you had your fiber, you had the muscle on the outside, you had the tendon, you had the blood vessels around it. So explain why blood vessels run through the bundles of muscle fibers, okay? So what is the purpose of those blood vessels and what the purpose are, is, is that your cells need oxygen and other nutrients in order to perform their functions. Blood vessels bring blood and oxygen and nutrients to your muscle cells. The harder the muscle cells must work, the more oxygen it needs for energy. So if you think of runners running a marathon, I know Castellucci girls, this is a frequent flyer at your house, but if you think about what you need to eat before running a marathon or doing a wrestling match or playing a football game, you know, usually you want to drink things like Gatorade with electrolytes and you want to eat carbohydrates usually to give you that energy. And um, they have a whole line of um, active athletic products, drinks, snacks, food to eat before doing big ticket items when it comes to using your muscles. And what that does is that increases the amount of oxygen and nutrients going to your muscles so that they can work to the top capacity that they need to. Okay, so we're gonna say that the blood vessels bring oxygen and nutrients to the muscles to give them energy towards doing their, their functions. So without that energy, without those nutrients, the oxygen, your muscles can't function. They can function to a degree, um, and it, they'll function over a period of time, but the longer you go without nutrients and blood and oxygen, the less your muscles are going to function, and they'll eventually stop working. And so it's really important um, to make sure that you are hydrated, to make sure that you are eating proper foods, especially if you're doing uh, big activity things. All right, and number nine, explain the importance of the muscular tissue in the digestive system. So what does the muscles in the digestive tract do and why is that important? Well, the muscles move your food through your digestive tract so that your body can absorb the nutrients it needs to and get rid of the things it doesn't need to. If your muscles stopped working in your digestive tract, not only would you not absorb nutrients, which wouldn't be healthy for your body, but your body would not get rid of the waste that it has from food. And so your body would actually become toxic or septic, it's called. When your body doesn't move that through your system, it actually poisons your body. That's why we have a system to get rid of those things so that your body can function properly. When your body doesn't get rid of those things, it becomes really dangerous. And so with those muscles, it's important, the function that they have is that it moves those things through your body. So, the muscles in the digestive tract move food through the body, absorb nutrients, and get rid of waste. All really important jobs. They're important for keeping the body clean, healthy, and energized. All right. That's the only page we're gonna do in our lab today. So looking through this, muscles are really important and they do a lot more jobs than we think they do. Your muscles are more than just lifting weights or doing a push up or running a mile. Your muscles are what make your whole body work. So let's take care of our muscles, 
Let's make sure we're eating good foods, giving it the energy that it needs, um, and getting outside and getting active. It's getting warmer out. So go use those muscles um, for more than just moving your pencil. Get outside and do some running. I'll see you next time.